welcome to our YouTube channel. This is our family, and we are off grid on Friday. Boxes, battery, panels, pure sine wave inverter, 1000 watts, MPPT charge controller, 40 amps, cables, connectors, manuals, miscellaneous. It's time to commence solar science. Plywood for mounting. We need more plywood for mounting. More, more plywood, plywood for, for mounting. mounting. Plenty of space. Measure. Mark. Cut. Cut faster. No, wait. Bicycle brake. Time to eat turkey. To be continued. Activate. Nice. Bright blue. Scout and I have decided to slow down this process a little bit because if you connect these wrong, it's a big bummer. Polarity and all that stuff is a bummer. But as you can see, how these came is that the can see inside there but you can see I'm tightening it and that little ledge comes up but it actually came all the way came all the way tightened so I had to loosen it down so this is for the PV or photovoltaic which means the solar panels I was just attempting to tighten the battery negative I marked it even though I have to have it upside down anyway so I can truly see what I'm doing but just a quick reference guide right I got a little temperature to temp uh, PV positive, PV negative, battery positive, battery, ne battery negative, the low, the DC load positive, negative, and this connection here, which is where the Bluetooth is going to go later. But to connect it up, I'm just going to stick the negative load into this guy right here, and then tighten it up. And as I tighten it up, you're going to see, so the old ready tight, well, this one's all the way tight. All right, lower that down. Here comes the ledge. Look at that live action. And then I'm gonna stick the load in there, but I'm gonna need two hands. When I do that, there's the load. Anyway, we're not gonna really do the load. Time out. So we're gonna slow it down a little bit. As you can see, things are nicely labeled on the bottom. But when you're looking at the charge controller, you can't see it. So I did a little, little artwork myself with some masking tape. Scout approves. All right, and as you can see, I'm about to hook up the battery to the <laughs> stock. Stop licking my stuff. Time out. Okay, where were we? I wanna connect the battery to the charge controller first before I connect up the panels or even the sine wave inverter. So, Taking it slowly because if you screw this part up, um, it, it could really suck, to be honest, right? If you reverse polarity, you could fry all the components out. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know enough to go even at a medium pace. I'm going to go as slow as possible so I do this right first time up. Knock on wood. So, as you can see, there's a battery negative right here. I got the screwdriver to tighten it. Well, it comes already tightened all the way up, so I stuck the wire in there try to tighten it and it wouldn't tighten and I'm like what the flip so I have to loosen it down and you can see on the the PV positive PV negative the PV stands for photovoltaic or the panels um they're all the way down well I, I lowered them down off camera right and same with the battery positive you can see that tray come down but as you see me lower this you can see this slowly coming down right this little tray and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower that all the way down I'm gonna stick the negative terminal on there from the battery, and then I'm gonna tighten it. And when I tighten it, the ledge goes up. And so I'll show you, this. that's what it starts to look like when it goes up, all right? And I will tighten it off camera because I need two hands. All right, the negative terminal is in there. Um, it's tightened up, so I didn't over tighten it. They warned about over tightening, right? Because you break the mechanism, but you just give it a tug. It's not going anywhere, right? But I wasn't stripping the screw out on the top either inside here right i was just giving it enough pressure to where it's firmly in there there's no exposed wire 
um, and I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to the battery. All right, as you can see, I've got the Renogy lithium iron phosphate battery. All right, it is 12 volts, 100 amp hours. That aside, um, just a quick label. Grab right there. All right, so I used a socket set, right? Now we're using a socket set. Everybody said don't use a wrench to where the wrench could touch and connect the terminals and, you know, make this into a welding machine, right? Create that arc. So I don't want to do that. I've done that before on my RV battery and it was cool to watch, but kind of scary. And luckily nothing exploded, which is, you know, always pleasant. Anyways, take this off. Put this right on the terminal. And I'm gonna need two hands. All right, I started it. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down all the way to the terminal. Tight, all right. Now it's time for positive. Let's do this thing. All right, I got the positive terminal into the charge controller, right? I was able to, I like color coding, right? I was a sailor, so color coding helps, right? So I got red to red right here, right? So it lines up and then that's gonna go at the other end. I also labeled it red and I'm gonna go to the positive terminal. I'm gonna need two hands for this, but I heard there might be a spark from a previous video. Let's see if it does it. No, that was lackluster. Maybe it was for lead acids. Anyway, you can see it's reading it. It's reading the volts right now. So let me go ahead and finish connecting this up. All right, now I want to connect up the inverter. So I'm going to start with the negative terminals, right? Go negative to negative, positive to positive. So I'll start loosening this up to connect the negative terminal up first. And then see on the flip side. Now with my inverter, let's take this off. All right, I'll take, so now I know the negative terminal goes there. So what I'm gonna do is unscrew this and I get it on there. All right, something cool to note is that the bolt actually can thread right into the lead independently of the nut on the back. Um, so obviously you need to tighten both the, the nut on the nut side and then the washer and lock washer on top of the battery cable where it goes into the lead of the inverter. Um, so pretty cool, it can thread and you get it started, but you need to tighten the back. And then a little trick that my father-in-law, who knows power more than most humans, giving a little tips and tricks here, right? So put this little cable on at first, and then you can snap it back in. Let's see if I can get it straight, all right. All right, so cool, it looks all neat and cool. All right, we'll do the same for the positive, right? Take this off, expose the terminal, and then get the positive side to that, and then see if we can get some AC energy out of this thing. And then next, hook up the panels and make sure we have a completely operating system. All right, positive is hooked up, right? Put the little cover back on. And now we're about to see if we can get power to this. So I'm gonna undo this. I'll switch root of the hands. Let this go. Hopefully this doesn't go flying everywhere. I'm gonna use both hands. I'll show you when I'm tightening it up. All right, it's hooked up, right? Positives. Positive. It's all good to go. Let's see if this thing turns on. All right, let's go ahead and turn it on, see if it goes, right? Clearly labeled on the top, off, and then remote. I don't have the remote connected at this point, so I'm just gonna turn it on with the old Mark I finger. And green, light, good to go. Doesn't look like there's any problem with the ground fault interrupt or any kind of system problem. All right, awesome, let's plug something in. Are you ready for this, Scout? I am too. All right, inverter's on, everything's hooked up, good to go. All right, got a little old 
crappy fan here from the garage. Just grab something that can draw some electricity out of the AC portion. And let's do this thing, right? So this is already selected to off, right? You want to turn it off. Be gentle with the power and the draw and the initial watts and everything. Anyways, it is plugged in. And let's go ahead and turn it on. And we have AC power, America. Good to go. All right, I've got the panels hooked up, right? Positive and negative. I marked the positive connection with positive tape, right? With red tape, right? It keeps it easy reference for myself so I don't get too easily mixed up and don't make any kind of really irreversible and very detrimental mistakes. So now I'm gonna go ahead and connect up the terminals, right? The, the negative terminals are disconnected from the inverter and the charge controller. I'm gonna go ahead and connect that up and hopefully get some business going. All right, the negatives from both the charge controller and the inverter are being tightened down. Looks like I'm reading power on the charge controller again. And I've got my panels over there hanging out, not getting sun yet. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the sun and see what we read. The sun is in your face, your pretty face. All right, so I've got the 100 watt solar panels hooked up. I've got them hooked up in series. So that means I've got the positive and negative connected back here, right? So they can bring more voltage to the system, which is not recommended for a PWM charger, but since I have the MPPT, it can handle the different volts, give the necessary amount to the battery. Oh, it is a charge controller. I can't remember what it stands for uh, because I'm not energy people, but uh, it's written down somewhere. <laughs> so basically <clears throat> I did create these PVC pipe systems uh i did it i'll probably put it on the back end of the video i've got a breakdown of what i did to make those all right and then i just got the wires going in the garage here to where just watch your step everybody to where everything's hooked up so the charge controller is on showing all the necessary symptoms right yeah or symptoms all the necessary uh system statuses all right, so now you can see that arrow has got energy coming from the panel and the arrow is back filling with energy to the battery, right? And now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the AC controller, right, Hit that on button like we did before. Boom, and that's AC power, good to go. All the indicators are good, just the green light, no no issues with any kind of uh, portion of the symptom, uh, system. And then plug in this old fan and we got clean power. So hopefully, hopefully it'll power more than the fan. But uh, yeah. I sure hope so. Yeah, that's that's the deal, right? We wanted to go ahead and power maybe a little mini fridge with 1,000 watts <laughs> um, and a television set and Blu-ray player, which Dang, we'll do on the land. this crazy, babe. I know. It it's looks good. Thanks. You look good. Okay, the fan's been running for about 20 minutes, no issues. I'm not even really sure how many watts it's drawing, to be honest with you. I know that if I had one of those battery capacity monitors, it would probably tell me in detail what the draws were, depending on the model I got and what, what it offered, but I digress. Anyways, this is what the charge controller is showing, right? And the MPPT, which is what Karina asked for before and I did not know, was the maximum PowerPoint tracking technology, so. I guess it means it does its job well, right? And it's uh, computing what kind of charge the battery needs or doesn't need. Um, I probably over oversimplified that, but I'm a pretty oversimplified guy. Anyway, looking back at this, so you can see that just kind of going through, we'll toggle through the pages, right? So you got the panel, you can see is feeding the battery, right? I have the load off. I don't want the load on. All right, no error codes, all right? It's just the load is setting, right? So this is probably the ambient temperature of the charge controller. I'm not sure if it's the battery or the charge controller. They're both uh, they're both set up. But anyway, all right, going, how much battery is going to load, which is nothing, because the load is off, right? It looks like how many amps are going to the actual battery. Right, go back, all right, 13.5 volts. It's gonna say 100%. I've heard that sometimes it says 100% when it's not 
I don't know enough to make that determination. All right, and this is how many amps are coming in from the panels, right? It's coming in at a, just under nine amps, right? It just kind of cycles through. It's in full sun, it's about 11, 12 a.m. I'm sorry, 11 a.m. or 12 p.m. I don't really know. I haven't been keeping track of time very well. Uh, but that's how much it's drawing in with that sun, right? Taking in all that sunshine. So I'm gonna be putting a 10, 10 amp breaker on that. More on that in a second, right? And then that's how many volts, I believe, is coming from the panels, right? Just under 35 volts. And then back to the main screen. So later on, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fuse everything, right? I got fuses for everything, but I have another terminal, things like that. This will be for the, this is 10 amps for the, from the panels into the charge controller. This is 100 amps, and that will be in between the battery and the sine wave inverter, pure sine wave inverter. And I got a 40 amp uh, in between the, I believe it's the charge controller and the battery. And that, that way it won't blow out. Uh, that's it. What's up, homies? The next steps are to try it out on the land. Make sure to tune in for our next videos.